Let's quickly go ahead and see the third style, Zudo and Moss style. This is nothing but a Zudo and Moss style. In Zudo and Moss style, let's quickly make the CMOS inverter first. So this is nothing but a CMOS inverter which we just saw, input, output. In Zudo and Moss style, we saw that the pull down is going to be same like my static CMOS style. So let's make the pull down quick. So this is nothing but my pull down, only one NMOS. And my pull up will be nothing but substituted by a PMOS which has its input equal to zero or grounded. So let's do that real quick. So this is nothing but my PMOS with its input grounded and the output is taken in between the pull up and the pull down network. So let's call this transistor P1, let's call this transistor N1 and let's call this input A. So the pull up is nothing but a PMOS transistor with its input grounded and pull down is nothing but same like static CMOS. Let's see whether this works or not. Input A, output Y. When input A is zero, this is off because NMOS turns on when logic one is applied. So P1 is on. So P1 is on and it produces or it pulls the output to VDD. So output is one. However, when A is one, here is where the problem happens. A is one that time this is already zero so this is always on so p1 is also on when a is one p1 is on because its input is grounded and so is n1 so p1 is trying to pull the output towards vdd whereas n1 is trying to pull the output towards ground so here we have to ensure that because we want the output to go towards ground n1 should be strong than p1 as i discussed in the previous clip about the example of cake and a cat so if N1 is stronger then P1 will have this functionality and will ensure that that happens. So when my input is one, my output will be equal to zero. This is approximately equal to zero. So this gives me a inverter in zero and more style. Let's quickly go ahead and see the dynamic style. This is nothing but a dynamic style. Let's make the standard diagram first. Let's make my CMOS inverter real quick. This is my PMOS, this is my NMOS. We've discussed this now enough. So the circuit says that the NMOS logic is same like static CMOS. I've just made my NMOS logic. However, here you see beyond or below the NMOS logic, there is a footer transistor. So we need to make that footer transistor here. And above my end fit logic, there is a header transistor. So let's make that also, which is nothing but a PMOS. If you see properly, the header and the footer transistor both has their input shorted and which is called nothing but phi. And the output is taken in between my PMOS and my NMOS logic. So here is the point where I'm going to take my output from. This is my VDD and this is my ground and this is my input A. Let's see how this works. So when phi is equal to zero, my output V out, phi is equal to zero, so this P1 transistor would be on. At that point of time, my N2 would be off. So there is no path to ground. Phi is equal to zero means PMOS on. The same phi is going here and this turns on only when one is applied, but currently the value is zero, so this is off. So any change on A will not be reflected because there is no direct path to ground. So no change on A will be reflected, fine. When phi is equal to one, now let's quickly do this. When phi is equal to one, that means my PMOS transistor is off. And now if my A is also equal to zero, if A is zero, this transistor is off and output initially was anyways charged to VDD. There was a capacitor here, remember that. So my output, when A is zero, my output is one. Same what we want for an inverter. When phi is one and my A is equal to one also, so if A is also equal to one, remember phi is one. So what's going to happen here is phi is one, A is one. That means this NMOS is on because it has an input five and N1 is on. So output will have a part to go to ground. So this is nothing but when my A is one, my output is equal to zero and hence the functionality of the inverter is achieved.